All right, let's talk about Russell Wilson. Is Russ cooked here as the, uh, you know, a disappointing loss, really, quite frankly, a heartbreaking loss by the Broncos, uh, which really, while they still are technically in the playoff hunt, kind of feels like this is this is it for them. And the Broncos offense, just it, it didn't have a great day. The Patriots defense is good. Let's talk about what went wrong for the Broncos and also what went right. They had some, again, they came back and tied the game, right? So they finally got it going eventually. But let's talk about what went wrong, what went right, and then where do we go from here? So this play, it's going to be a zone coverage play on a third down and goal situation. You know, they get the turnover to get the ball inside the five right away uh, to start this game. Watch as Wilson's going to take the snap. He looks down the field, you know, uh, it's pressure, so he scrambles out. He eventually gets to this point, which I think it's fair to say at this point, you know, c- couple things. For one, would have been nice if someone got open right away, right? And that's kind of been an issue for Denver in the Russell Wilson era is that they just they haven't gotten a lot of great receiving play. They haven't gotten a lot of guys open. And last year, we kind of thought maybe it's a Nathaniel Hackett issue. Well, Sean Payton's pretty good at dialing stuff up. I wouldn't think it's a coaching issue here. Uh, I think that they need an extra receiver or two. I, I really do. And listen, I like Cortland Sutton. I like Jerry Judy. I just think they could use another guy probably. So, okay, play doesn't work. Russell Wilson now trying to make something happen here. But, you know, just looking at it here, I know it's a little blurry. This is not a throw he should be making. Wilson throws one that was nearly intercepted. Actually ended up hitting the ground, so it was incomplete, but easily could have been intercepted right there. I I wouldn't say easily, but could have been intercepted. It was a dangerous throw from Wilson. These are types of plays that you you want to avoid because, like, okay, listen, they went for it on fourth down and didn't get it anyway, but you could have cost yourself the opportunity to have a fourth down scenario. Maybe you take the risk. Maybe you feel like it's worth taking the risk, and maybe his receiver and him wasn't on the same page. I don't know. You know, plenty of X factors, but as a whole, uh, a dangerous play that didn't work. And also, stuff like this, I mean, you're not going to win many games if you can't hit on this type of play. It's, it's Cortland Sutton when he was still in the game with a one-on-one matchup on the outside. And like, listen, uh, you know, the Patriots do defend well. Like, that is something that uh, they've done a very good job of. This is Miles Bryant on Cortland Sutton. One-on-one matchup on the outside on a third down and six. Important play. Wilson is going to take the snap. He's going to look towards the outside. He fires towards the outside. And there really isn't much separation. But Wilson's kind of saying, you know what? I'm just going to give my player a chance. And I'm not saying Sutton hasn't won on these. He can win on these occasionally. But really, I mean, in an ideal offense, you want to have it where teams don't even run this coverage because they're afraid that you're going to win on the outside if they run this coverage. But here, when Wilson throws it up, they are not able to get that big completion. Uh, The Patriots get the stop. These are types of plays you want to hit on as an offense, and they're just not hitting on them. And again, for coaching, only so much you can do. That's the right uh, route to have in that situation of if, it, if it's cover one man, go right on the outside. Nothing's ever going to beat that, but the players have to be able to hit it. And on that one, uh, Bryant was able to beat Sutton and Wilson. And then there were also just some like bad breaks or like bad plays really where something like this zone coverage where they're going to try to get the over the middle area cleared out. And again, this is the Sean Payton stuff, right? Have guys run clear out routes, uh, designed to get someone open. Uh, that's what they want to do here. Wilson is going to take the snap. He runs a play action, which doesn't even really work, the play action part. Uh, You know, the linebackers are still further enough deep. But Wilson, you know, throwing this play at the right time at this point. There definitely is a window to try and get the ball to Brandon Johnson. However, you know, uh, it was a tad behind Johnson, and Johnson isn't able to make the play. So, you want to blame it on Wilson? You want to blame it on Johnson? Either way, though, that has to be a catch. It, It just does. So, not being able to hit on these types of plays is just, it's its what created a not great offense. There were some opportunities, but they weren't able to execute. Granted, coming over here, they were able to come back, and they, it was actually a pretty good comeback. I mean, they were down 16, you know, with uh, 10 and a half minutes left, and this was kind of the play that really jump-started the potential comeback. So the way it works is you have two deeper routes. One's going to eventually go over the middle. The other one uh, is going to be more so uh, towards the sideline. That's Mims. The goal is to try and isolate Mims with a one-on-one matchup. Wilson is going to take the snap right here. He's going to look down the field and at this point, I mean, you know, uh, had time to throw, but pressure is now starting to come. Can't block forever. But watch Wilson scramble outside of that and then he's going to throw off balance towards Mims. Mims has now 
finally gotten open, not wide open by any means, but there is a window for Wilson to make this throw. And, you know, in Seattle, these were the types of plays he was hitting on, right? Running outside the pocket, finding a way to get the ball down the field and make something happen. And look at this, perfect throw, great catch. They pick up a big chunk play that set up the first touchdown and they went for two and got it, which allowed them to then be down just eight points. Uh, so, you know, huge play there by Wilson. Also, this play was, I thought, a really key one because it's going to be a second down and 20 situation. So if they don't convert, they're in real trouble. But it's zone coverage that the uh, Patriots are in. And look at that edge rusher right there. Watch what he's going to do. As you see, uh, right off the bat, he eventually, I shouldn't say right off the bat, but he does eventually get pressure. You know, initially, Russell Wilson doesn't love what he sees, but he's going to do what Russell Wilson does. Watch him scramble outside the pocket, but then scans the field, sees back over the middle, there was a window, and they pick up a good 16 yards on that, set up a third down and short, they converted, they tied the game, they ultimately did not win the football game. Um, but, you know, Wilson is still able to do a lot of this, you know, secondary stuff. The issue is that the kind of, you know, game script type plays aren't working the way they worked in Seattle. And I think that's the main issue. Russell Wilson, when he was at his best in Seattle, was also a great game manager. Like he wasn't just a playmaker type. He could manage a game very well. But when there isn't a great game to manage, there's only so much you can do as a quarterback, and you can try to make stuff happen, but it's not going to work out so well. So personally, for me, I think that's the biggest thing the Broncos have to do. If they're going to keep Wilson and try to run this back, you have to put some resources into the receiving core. Yes, that means that you're, you could be in trouble because, you know, Yes, they're paying Russell Wilson a ton of money. If you look at his contract, the way it's set up, if you look at the cap number, uh, you know, it was only $22 million this year, moves up to $35 million the following year, and then it's going to be over $50 million each of the next four seasons. So they're going to be paying him a lot of money uh, down the stretch. You can try and cut him if you want to, but getting rid of him, you're looking at $85 million in uh, dead cap. Now, that gets a little bit better if you trade him. It's $68 million, so still a ton of money. But the trade situation does seem to be uh, interesting. And, and part of what I've speculated in the past is, do you potentially trade Russell Wilson, but workshop the contract in a way where the, you know, the team that is taking on his contract takes some of that dead money as well, uh, or maybe even you take some of the money they would have to pay, and you workshop something that way so that the team that, you know, gets his contract, they're getting him on a much more reasonable contract, something like $25 million a year, something like that, and the Broncos get a big chunk of dead money, which they just pay this season, and then they're good. Do you try something like that? It's, it's possible. At the end of the day, though, it's just a disappointment, but I would say I do think the Broncos are in a better spot now than they were entering the year because Wilson at least looked like a playable player whereas last year he like was actively bad this year he wasn't bad he just was underwhelming he just he's not worth a 50 million dollar deal so to me if I'm the Broncos I'm trying to I don't know I'm going to Atlanta and saying hey do you want us to pay him 25 million a year we'll you know eat the dead cap for one year have a rebuilding year and go from there that's how I would view it I still think it was the right decision to trade for Russell Wilson I still think that was the right move it just hasn't worked out uh that's what I think what do you think let me know in the comments below Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.